In this how-to video, I will show you how to calculate the risk crossover point for your project. In any project, you face the question of what is too risky or too safe. Instead of using absolute numbers like 0.75, Writing software proposes an elegant idea. Compare the rate of growth of the risk curve to the direct cost curve. Reason being, with high compression, while direct cost is shooting up, the risk is maximized and even come down. So since you, should, since you should never design for maximum risk, even before maximum risk, you should probably stop. And you should stop when the rate of growth of the risk is less than that of the direct cost curve scaled correctly. Much the same way you can find the point where the risk is too safe because giving the project too much time would incur uh, an increased overestimation risk. What I'm going to show you is calculating the crossover points for the sample project from chapter 11 and this example of how to calculate the risk crossover point is in chapter 12. So I have here a spreadsheet with the activity risk coefficients and the direct cost coefficients. These are simply the result of modeling the risk and the direct cost curve. See the other how-to videos how to generate these coefficients. With that in place, I can simply plot the direct cost and the activity risk side by side. Now, if you were to actually do it, you would find that the activity risk is between zero and one and direct cost is between uh, 20 or 40. And that's obviously uncomparable, so you have to scale them. The way we actually scale them is we plot them together on the same Y chart. And the way to scale it is multiplying the risk curve by some kind of a factor. The factors we can choose is the value of cost at the time of maximum risk divided by the value of risk at the time of maximum risk. Now you can actually pick any point on the curve, except since risk can also go to zero, you don't want to pick a point that's too close to zero because dividing by zero is a funny number. Since risk can never get bigger than its maximum value, it's a good idea to look at that because that will give you the uh, smallest possible scaling factor. So this part of the spreadsheet actually calculates the value of maximum risk, and you can actually do it fairly easily using a solver. If you go to the data and pick a solver, it doesn't matter what the risk model is, you can ask it what will give me the maximum value over here and you would solve it. And we can see that the value of maximum risk is 0.85 at 8.25 months. If I have the risk formula and the cost formula, I could ask it what is the value of risk and what is the value of cost at those points in time. And the scaling factor is simply the ratio of those two. With that in place, I can plot the direct cost and the activity risk cost on the same curve, and that's what it looks like. And now I can actually compare the direct uh, cost to the risk curve fairly. This is what this spreadsheet is actually doing. You can visualize what's going on in the chart, but let me show you the numbers first. Here you have the time scale, and you can control the increment over here. Here you have the direct cost derivative in absolute value, and here you have the risk derivative in absolute value. What the solver is doing here, the solver is simply comparing those two in absolute value, including the risk factor. Now to force it to look just at the ranges I'm looking for, I have a conditional statement here that if the value is uh, beyond a certain range, I'm tossing a 100, which means definitely not zero. Then I'm asking the solver to find the value where this expression is actually zero. And if you run the solver, you will find this is 10 to the minus 7 is as close as to zero as the solver can actually find. You would find these two crossover points. So that's kind of like the numerical way of doing it, but you can do it graphically as well. If I have here the direct cost derivative in absolute value and the activity risk derivative in absolute value, I can actually plot it, which is what this chart is about. And once you have that, you can actually hover with the mouse at the point where they cross over. Let me just move this a little bit to the side. And you can see that the crossover point with the mouse is 9.03, just what we got here with the solver. So that's a bit cheesy, but you can actually do it this way. Or you can even look at the table here of the values in the spreadsheet. And you're simply looking for the value where the difference between the two is minimized.
And we can see that right here, it is minimized because here it's uh, negative, here it's uh, slightly positive, so somewhere around 9.03. So you can do it uh, using the solver, you can do it graphically, you can do it in the table. But however you do it, the result is that you find the crossover points. Once you have the crossover points, you can find the risk at those crossover points, which is what the spreadsheet is doing over here. And you can find that it's fairly similar to the rules of thumb of 0.3 and 0.75. So any risk, uh, any solution that has risk higher than 0.81 is too risky, and if it's lower than 0.28, it's too safe. For more on risk and project design, see writing software.